ready for this duel? Neither am I, and I already did this duel. How wonderful. He also showed just how quick both of these duels were, I mean... They were both like, what, 11 minutes each. And I was with the dialogue and everything. So yeah, you're probably thinking, what the heck is that match duel thing at the beginning? It's, it just means that this duel is set up at, kind of, as kind of a 2 out of 3. Maximum number of duels you can do is 3 duels, where you win one, or vice, and your opponent wins one, or vice versa. And then whoever wins the second time wins overall. Now you would think this would help you with registering Chaz, but he still doesn't like to be registered. Despite you having to be forced to get like seven victories against him before he can actually unlock him as a duelist. Now as for his strategy with this deck, it's based off of... Well, it's actually really similar to Toromaki in that it has a ton of dragons, but it also has the Armed Dragon series, which can be pretty scary, seeing as that while level 3 is pretty bad, it can summon level 5, and level 5 is pretty strong, so you can use level 5 to destroy a monster and use its effect to summon level 7, and level 7 is pretty strong and kind of hard to deal with. Now, an interesting thing there is that he used the Carver Yorku which is really extremely broken in my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! game, Duels of the Roses. In that game, the card's effect is no joke. You're allowed to cut your opponent's life points in half and then add however many life points you took to a monster. Yeah, that's kind of broken just hearing that, isn't it? I don't even think you can get the card without some extreme searching, but that's getting to specifics. As for how the duels went, I did pretty well against him in both duels. This first duel, I was able to get his life points down far enough that even when he was able to get a good strategy, he had... I had too many options and he didn't have enough, so I was able to outwit him in the end. But, um, he did get it close because I was thinking, oh no, I better be careful with attacking Mass Dragon because what he likes to do with this deck is he likes to use Mass Dragon to special summon his Arm Dragon level 3, which if you let it live until his next standby phase will level up to level 5 and I've already explain how that works. So we, but instead of summoning another Master Dragon so that he could carry out that strategy, he just immediately summons Element Dragon knowing that Command Knight being a fire element would give it a 500 attack bonus. Then he does this, instantly summons it. Yeah, level up is a very good card because of that reason alone. Now... Thankfully, I was able to have the smart idea of, wait a second, since Amazon is Swordswoman, this effect allows me to use any battle damage against me with that card to him, and his Arm Dragon level 7 is high enough attack points, then I can just attack it and end the duel. Well, I decided to do that, but first off, I decided to be really weird and summon Guy the Fierce Knight, then use Last Will's effect to summon Amazon Swordswoman that way instead of just regular, oh wait, I remember why now, because Command Knight would have given her an attack vote, a 400 attack bonus, and would not have been able, and I would not have been able to one-shot him. That is why, okay, I wasn't dumb. And I did actually look at Exile Force, like, well, I could do that, but this is a more interesting way to win. Not to mention, it's an incredibly funny way to fake out the opponents, like, oh, wait, you attacked me, what are you doing? Why, have, why is it that I lost? And we get a happy face. Now, as for this part of the anime, you know, Jazz was already an annoying person to begin with. 
but you know, you got a little bit more backstory. Apparently, his older brothers expect too much of him, and they're both like rich and famous, and he's trying to um, succeed in life. You know, little brother, older brother syndrome. So you felt a little bit of a, more of a connection with him. It was understandable his condition. And then in Duel Academy, this event was completely different. Now I don't remember if this was in the anime, but instead of being instead of saying Chaz it up, it's Chaz the Thunder. So that confused me the first few times I was playing. Not to mention, like I said, the game was really bad with having any kind of different sprites with characters, so he was still in his blue uniform, not in his black North Academy uniform. And then his deck, since the armed dragon cards weren't in the game, was just a mishmash of really odd cards that I don't even remember the theme of that deck overall. It was just kind of weird. That game was horrible with the events overall. It was funny to see what they did sometimes to overcome it, but ugh, still, in the end. Now then, I have a good nine minutes or so of video that I'm probably not going to be talking about the game, so let me just discuss the cartoon version of Martin the Warrior. So far, I have a ton of stuff written down about it. The main thing I noticed when I was first playing the game was, uh, when I was first watching the series, was it had a very different art style. A lot of the characters finally got some sclera or white in their eyes. So, you know, they were able to convey emotions better. That w that's one thing that Redwall and Matameo probably had problems with, but Matameo was so awesome I didn't notice. And pretty much most of the um, animals in the show were changed like that, like Feldo, was, Feldo being a squirrel showed it, Rona being a badger showed it, Bala, the rabbit showed it, Martin, Martin had a different look, I guess the separating from Matthias. Then there's the new animal, the stoats of the Dragon Clog. They definitely had more sclera, and Grum the Mole had a ton more sclera than Four Mole and the other moles in the Redwall and Matameo shows. Also, what was really different was there were way, way more noticeable accents this go around. I could really hear the Scottish and British accents in most every character. I think that's a bad thing, but it's just kind of odd after being so used to hearing a rabbit have a really thick British accent. And then hear him having a kind of medium Scottish accent like Bala has. Yeah. And not to mention, since I don't mind censorship, the tickle torture moment was like the best censorship moment ever. I mean, considering how gruesome the source material is, which says that the fox was stuck with so many arrows he looked more like a pincushion. Then seeing them turn it into a tickle torture was a pretty good laughing moment. So the show is different, not in a bad way, but you can definitely see it as being something distinct from Matamano and Redwall. Now here I'm finishing up the duel by saying what the heck was keeping him so long and just finishing out the duel in a good five turn duel. Even use Melamore for a good old overkill. And so with that we have been 
Chaz Princeton pretty soundly. Twice in a row, actually. We won the match. And we get to see the very, very long string of dialogue afterwards where everyone was like, congratulations, you actually did it. See, we got Shepard, Jaden, Cyrus. I'm surprised Chumley didn't do it. He did it whenever we won last time. But then we try and see them off and Chaz decides that he wants to stay here. He has some unfinished business, a.k.a. he hasn't won against us yet. Then, probably, he hasn't won against Jane yet. Because even though Jane does squat in the games, he is still known as one of the best duelists on the island. And it's true. Now, what's funny is that he gets transferred in Slifer Red, and then, hey, now we're neighbors, we can share toothbrushes! <laughs> That's just a great line of dialogue in the game. And suddenly spirit. Yeah, I was able to get a um, eastern side spirit. And yeah, this is one of the easier ones. This is the Soitsu spirit. He's pretty useless, but he is. But he does belong to, and he does use, one of the weirdest card combinations that I've ever seen in the second generation. For some reason, he's decided to use the Soitsu, Doitsu, Aitsu, and Koitsu. Although I'm probably mispronouncing all four of those horribly. As well as a few other Union cards. You see, the cards work in that there's Soitsu and Doitsu. Um, two of the four being the Union Monsters, and the way they work is, you get Soitsu and Doitsu out, I'm pretty sure it's Doitsu that's the Union Monster, and so what you do is you equip them to a Soitsu, both of them have zero attack and zero defense, so they're pretty useless otherwise, but once you equip Doitsu to Soitsu, then Doitsu get no Soitsu gets 2,000 attack points and piercing ability, which is not too bad. Where it gets really weird is whenever you add in so is when you add in Aitsu and Koitsu. Aitsu is level five, so it requires a tribute summon. Yeah, there's Soitsu right there. And he has zero attack and zero defense, so you have to be really careful with him. Weird thing I can remember about Aitsu is that Sater used him in Duel Academy. I don't know why. I think he even had Koitsu in that deck. But Koitsu is the really weird one because he has... 10 stars, so you have to sacrifice two monsters to get him on the field. And then you have to equip him to Aitsu, and Aitsu gains 3,000 attack points and, and gains a piercing ability. I don't know if they have any other effects, but if that's really it, then they really aren't worth it. I'm not sure why they made it an entire sphere based around these cards, but. Guess that's just how the cookie crumbles. Now, even though he has the XYZ union cards, he doesn't have the XY, XZ, or YZ, or XYZ combinations, so you don't have to worry about him getting those out. And it's pretty easy to stop the Soitsu, Doitsu, Aitsu, and Koitsu combinations. Otherwise, just a really easy spear that's, that if I remember correctly, its effect is kind of useless as well. Oh well. I already won the duel. You blink, I win the duel. Alright, I was actually able to get through this. It took me three times, this is my third time already, to get through a whole, this whole part. So next time, hopefully I'll have more interesting stuff to say.